A warm welcome to the fifth film in our Building Services series. In it, we consider how building services are integrated into the design of a building. We've already seen from the contrasting washroom and workshop photographs that there are two possible strategies. Services are either left exposed and integrated by imposing structure and order, or they are concealed as much as possible. This is largely a matter of building use. The contemplative atmosphere of a religious space requires different design principles than an HGV workshop in which truck gearboxes are dismantled. Let's take a look at the various options for dealing with large-scale plant, distribution networks and consumers. Plant rooms are often large but rarely attractive. They are generally located in basements or on roofs. In many buildings, however, a plant room on the roof would spoil the look of the building, so housing it in the basement offers a better, though generally more expensive, solution. Plant rooms are often located on roofs to save both space and costs. Ventilation and refrigeration plant, in particular, is located on roofs because the air extraction routes are shorter and the units are noisy. Supposedly unobtrusive cladding is often used to conceal rooftop plant rooms, though more often than not, they are improvements for the worse. A much better solution is to build an entire plant floor, as we did in our laboratories in Leipzig. Building service cables and pipes frequently run in the ceiling, where they must not clash with the load-bearing system. One way of avoiding this is to arrange the majority of cabling and consumers parallel with the ceiling joists or girders. This principle is referred to as the separation of building services and building structure. Building services and building structure are said to be integrated, on the other hand, when the majority of cables, pipes and ducting runs at right angles to the joists or girders and so must pass through them or in a secondary layer above them. We applied this integration principle in our Leipzig tram depot. Cabling, pipework and ducting can also be built into the structure of the building. Electric cables, for example, can be run in empty conduits laid in a reinforced concrete slab. This photograph of our Leipzig Cloud Laboratory shows a fair-faced concrete ceiling with integrated lights and smoke detectors. The cabling and ducting runs through the concrete ceiling and is therefore invisible. This type of integration is sometimes referred to as the merging of building services and building structure. Another practice commonly seen when seeking to integrate building services and architecture is to conceal the services. Cabling, pipework and ducting are positioned beneath the load-bearing structure and cladding is installed during the fit-out. Typically, this is a suspended ceiling like the one you can see in our Leipzig laboratories. It conceals all the cables and ducts leading to the ventilation outlets, lights, fire detectors, etc. The consumers for the building services need to be visible if they are to serve their intended purpose. To integrate them in the design, they need to be positioned in the room in an organised manner. The room you can see here has a strictly ordered feel because the radiator is located centrally in the space and the wash basins are placed equidistant from one another in rows. The order, structure and rigour of the room design are intended to encourage the junior school children who use it to do so in a thoughtful and respectful manner. As for the consumers themselves, they must also be attractive. Sanitary wear, lights, radiators and switches are all designed. All too often, however, this is done by poor designers and they are ugly as a result. Architects devote considerable time to sourcing attractively designed consumers and integrating less attractive ones attractively into their architecture. Summary There are two possible strategies for integrating building services into the design of a building. They can either be left exposed and integrated by imposing structure and order, or they can be concealed as much as possible. The architect must decide whether to separate, integrate or merge building services and the building structure. Visible consumers such as sanitary wear, lights, radiators and switches must be attractively designed if they are to be attractively integrated. We recommend that you take a look at the sixth film in our Building Services series. In it, we consider who is responsible for specifying building services and their integration into a building.